Thanks to Soundcore for sponsoring a portion of this video. You're in the market for a new iPhone. You haven't upgraded in a while and you don't want to blow money on something you'll later regret. But you've heard of a phone time and time again called the iPhone 13 mini. So naturally you go on apple.com to check out what it's all about. You know that a new iPhone is around the corner but you could care less. The addition of USB-C and slightly better cameras don't really intrigue you. Not to mention you're not willing to spend $800 on a brand new iPhone, especially given the state of the current economy. But some Something is wrong. You can't find the iPhone 13 mini on Apple's website. You think to yourself, okay, maybe there's some sort of a mistake. You hop on Google only to find out that the iPhone 13 mini has been discontinued. But there are some third party and some private sellers over on Facebook Marketplace that are willing to sell the iPhone 13 mini for as low as $400 to $500. You don't know too much about the iPhone 13 mini, but you're intrigued by its price. It is a little smaller than what you're accustomed to, but it does fit within your budget. So you aren't sure what to do. Like many of us, you hop on YouTube and you search for the iPhone 13 mini in late 2023 and you land on this video. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and this is the iPhone 13 mini. I bought this phone back in late 2021 and I immediately fell in love with it. Initially when I bought this phone, I told myself that I was never going to sell this device and that has held up true to this very day. You see, the iPhone 13 mini is a very unique phone in its own right. It's the first and the last iPhone of its kind. Well, only because Apple decided to not continue with this phone due to poor sales. But I feel like this phone, like many short kings out there, is misunderstood. Currently, I am running the latest version of iPhone was 17. And let me tell you, this phone only had one issue prior to these updates. Due to its small form factor, Apple was only able to add a 2400mAh battery. Not a big number by any means. But due to its size, this makes a whole lot of sense. Throughout the years, with every update, I did notice the battery life was improving. So about two months ago, I went back to the iPhone 13 mini as my daily driver. Well, about two months ago, I decided it was time for me to sell my iPhone 14 Pro Max. The iPhone 15 Pro is around the corner, and it only makes sense for me to buy that phone to review on the channel. So I popped a sim card out of my iPhone 14 Pro Max and of course being a tech reviewer I had a ton of options to choose from and there was no other phone I personally wanted to use more than the iPhone 13 mini. Using the iPhone 13 mini again after a long time felt rather strange. Especially coming from an iPhone 14 Pro Max I immediately noticed a lack of 120Hz display and of course the smaller form factor. I was questioning myself of whether or not I made the right decision but I told myself give it a few days to adjust and see what happens. And well, I'm glad that I did. The iPhone 13 mini just kept growing on me. Carrying a lighter phone on the daily felt like such a freeing experience. You aren't burdened with the weight of a bigger device in your pockets. Everything on this phone is within your reach. Whether you want to pull down the notification panel or the control center, everything on this phone is super easy to navigate and access. Transitioning from a 6.8 inch display to a 5.4 inch display wasn't that difficult. Everything did look smaller but I was quickly able to adjust. And just because this display is smaller, it doesn't mean it's a subpar display. The iPhone 13 mini is rocking an OLED display. The colors are rich and vibrant with true deep blacks. Watching YouTube, movies, or even Netflix shows on this phone is a truly pleasurable experience, despite the 5.4 inch size. And I'm positive with time, you guys will come to love this display. However, downgrading from a 120Hz panel to a 60Hz panel did take a little bit longer than I expected to get used to. Initially, that certain level of smoothness I expected from iPhones wasn't there. But over time, I got over it. I mean, it is a big step down, you are literally cutting your refresh rate by half. But now, after two months of switching over, I really don't miss having 120Hz at all. Whether I'm scrolling through Instagram or Twitter, or just basketball forums, 60Hz has been just fine. After all, this is an iPhone and Apple makes some of the best calibrated displays on the market. So as I used this device more and more, my confidence with it began to grow. I was going to take my iPhone 13 mini with me on a 10 day trip to Lisbon, Portugal and Barcelona, Spain. Initially, I was hesitant to do this. So I asked you guys over on Twitter and most of the responses were an overwhelming yes. I thought to myself, this would make for a great video. So why not? Let me just say the iPhone 13 mini exceeded all of my expectations while on this trip. Speaking of exceeding expectations, these earbuds by Soundcore totally blew me away. Way. These are the Soundcore Liberty 4 NCs, and these are an absolute steal, especially for the price. I used these while I was on my flight from Toronto to Lisbon, and you guys already know there are three guarantees in life taxes, death, and a crying baby on every single flight. Only this time, I beat the crying baby, not literally, but figuratively. And that's mainly thanks to the Soundcore Adaptive ANC 2.0s, which are able to adjust noise cancelling levels according to your personal ear canal, reducing 98.5% of noise in your surrounding environment. 
With the adaptive ANC, I was able to completely tune out my surrounding environment and of course, the crying baby. The active noise cancellation of the Liberty 4NC actually confuses me because these are actually better than what I'm getting on my AirPods Pro, which a lot of people claim to be the king of noise cancellation. These earbuds deliver crisp high-res sound with 11mm drivers and high-res wireless audio capable of LDAC quality transmission. They feature 10 hours of playtime and 50 hours with the charging case. In just 10 minutes of charging, you can get up to 4 hours of listening time. And if you are wondering, these are capable of wireless charging. The Liberty 4NCs are available in a plethora of colors and they do feature superior call quality with 6 mics powered by AI. And these also do feature smart wearing detection. So when you take off one earbud, the music automatically pauses and when you put back that same earbud, the music resumes. Honestly, the Soundcore Liberty 4NCs are an absolute steal at the current price. If you guys do want to check these out, there's a link for you guys in the description below and thanks to Soundcore for sponsoring this video. Of course, when you're traveling, you want a phone that's capable of taking some great pictures. So I was pretty worried, especially since this was the only camera I was planning on taking with me. And you know what they say, the best camera is the one that you have on you. And whoever said that wasn't kidding, because the iPhone 13 mini totally blew me away with some of these shots. Let's not forget, the main camera found on this phone is the same lens that Apple used on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And that, my friends, was a 2020 flagship device. So the cameras on the iPhone 13 mini are quite capable. And the main camera on this phone really pulled through for me while on vacation. I mean, just take a look at some of these photos. These shots are all rich in image with bright, vibrant colors and true sense of depth. The colors are very natural and true to life. Even indoors, the iPhone 13 mini captures the scene very well. It's capable of handling both the natural and the artificial light while maintaining the contrast and the shadows. Then I decided to have some fun and take some shots that look like this. Believe it or not, these shots were not edited in post. These are all shot on the iPhone 13 mini, directly from the main camera, but with a twist. I lowered the exposure on all of these shots to minus 0.7 and I applied a filter straight from the phone called Dramatic Cool. The results came out like this and Twitter seemed to love it. A lot of you probably don't even know that you can play around with the warmth, the tone, the exposure and even apply filters prior to your shot. So for next time, I encourage you guys to take your time when shooting scenes or subjects. Play around with the camera settings and settle on a type of shot that you personally like. As you guys can see, even with a two-year-old phone, the cameras are quite capable. So you don't always need the latest and greatest. A big cause for concern with these little phones is the battery life. Naturally, a smaller phone inevitably means a smaller battery. There's only so much Apple can do about the battery size. However, when it comes to screen on times, a lot of things matter. How efficient is the operating system? Does the phone overheat after an extended period of usage? And what updates is the phone manufacturer pushing out to improve the battery life over the years? These are all factors that will help boost and maintain battery life. Surprisingly for me, my iPhone 13 mini is at 99% battery health after two years of on and off usage. I only ever charge this phone with Apple's official MagSafe charger, so that could be something that's preserving the battery health, I'm not entirely sure. But I will say on iOS 17, the battery life on this phone has tremendously improved. On iOS 16, I was getting around five hours of screen on time, give or take. However, during my trip to Portugal and Spain, I was able to get through an entire days of usage, which was unexpected. I got around six to six and a half hours of screen on time on moderate usage. I used the iPhone 13 mini to navigate the streets of Lisbon and Barcelona, pictures of historical architecture, and scroll through Twitter and Instagram for about 10 to 20 minutes a day. And the battery held up just fine. I even took with me a MagSafe battery bank. This one is made by Banks, but I never ended up needing it. For the entire trip, I actually left it back in the hotel just because I didn't feel like carrying around additional weight with me. Honestly, really surprising stuff from the iPhone 13 mini, which in my opinion can only be credited to iOS 17. Because prior to this update, the screen on times weren't the greatest. Manageable, but nothing like six to seven hours. All in all, if you're in the market for an iPhone that won't break the bank, that's portable and easy to use with a very capable camera system, then go for the iPhone 13 mini. You'll still be getting four to five years of software support and it's still a very capable phone in 2023. If you guys made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below. I would love to know who my true supporters are. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. A lot of iPhone 15 content is on the way and don't forget to flex with your tech.